بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوری ون ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ڈسکس لینگویج ایکوزیشن ماڈلس ون آف دا تھری سیکنڈ لینگویج ایکوزیشن ماڈل از سوسیو سائیکولوجیکل ماڈل ایکچولی دیر آر تھری اینڈ ان براڈر سینس یو کین سے دیٹ دیز آر ڈفرینٹ اپروچز بائی ڈفرینٹ لینگویسٹس اینڈ سائیکولوجسٹس about second language acquisition that how the people they learn second language at uh, at a later stage of their lives so we are not talking here about uh, i mean the small kids but actually we are talking about the adults when they start learning a language in any in second language environment so there are three models and uh, we will discuss in this video socio psychological model this second language acquisition model was introduced in 1973 74 by lambert and uh, he focused on social and psychological aspects social it is apparently it means and actually it means also that in a society or in a gathering or in an environment where a minority group or uh, the the people who do not speak the dominant language they live and what impact that society has on their minds and the psychological aspect psychological aspects means the personal motivation level of the learner that how psychologically he or she adopts the learner adopts uh, himself or herself in the environment of tar- target language target language here means the second language uh, for example we uh, most of the pakistanis they go to saudi arabia for work uh, i mean almost every third home in pakistan or in every street or in every family someone from the family must be there who is there in the uae or in saudi arabia so most of the labor class go there for earning uh, when they go to saudi arabia or uae uh, from pakistan so uh, whether it's a sindhi speaker punjabi speaker pashto balochi whatever the native languages or urdu speaker so anyone living in pakistan uh, do not have any knowledge of uh, arabic language and just as we have the arabic language that we read quran we read nama uh, we offer prayer namaz and uh, that arabic language we know and most of us we do not know even the translation because most of us we read quran quran without translation and uh, Uh, everyone must read the translation to understand it because quran is a book of guidance by allah almighty but uh, as a matter of fact talking about this specific topic that we do not have a knowledge of arabic language as we must have to communicate with an arabic speaker but when the people from pakistan they go to saudi arabia they start living there within few days they start speaking arabic language not with a rapid pace not with very fluently but few of the sentences they learn and they start communicating with them and start living them and most of the people who are they are laymen they are uneducated they move from pakistan to there for work but when they spend 5 years 4 years or 6 years in saudi arabia or uae they become fluent arabic speakers they can easily communicate with them so this is the social environment when they move from uh, i mean a pakistani goes to saudi arabia where the majority group is arabic language and the minority group is punjabi or sindhi language whatever the language of the person is who has moved from pakistan to saudi arabia so in this way you can understand that if there is a majority language group and there is a minority language group so in saudi arabia urdu speakers punjabi speakers they are minority language and arabic speakers they are majority language 
now arabic language will be the dominant language the dominant language or the target language because they have to communicate in it now the, if, if we discuss the psychological aspect that a man who has moved from pakistan to another country specifically to saudi arabia so what they what are the psychological factors that motivates him to learn a language because they have to live there they have to communicate with them in simple words so the psychological aspects are also there in this model of socio psychological the focus is on social and psychological aspects then we have uh, the definition of this model is given here or some explanation that uh, there is a linguistic cultural group uh, a man moves from one group to another one linguistic cultural group is pakistan and one linguistic cultural group is saudi arabia man who is living here he has an uh, having an other culture and other language but when he moves to another country as i have given you example of saudi arabia there the culture of the arabic people is different from pakistanis and uh, definitely the language is also different in this way uh, so what would be his attitude towards the other group attitude towards the other group other group here means uh, the majority group where the man is going where the person is going what the language he has to learn specifically so uh, and when his attitude actually towards the majority language group it determines his motivational level because ultimately it is the motivational motivation or motivational level that forces a man or that compels a man to learn a language and not only learning a language i mean in every aspect of your life in your studies in your technical education in your daily routine matters you want to achieve the targets of your life whatever it is the the main or the basic the root cause uh, of uh, attaining any target is your motivational level unless and until we are motivated to achieve something we cannot we cannot achieve that so motivational level how this motivational level comes it comes from the social and the psychological aspects specifically from the psychological aspects that a man who is a person or a learner who is motivated from him Uh, from his inner self and he starts learning a language in this video we are because we are studying applied linguistics and we are talking about learning a language but in broader sense in simple words you can say motivational level is the most uh, motivational factor is the most important factor in each and every aspect of your life and that determines your success or failure definitely if your motivational level is higher Uh, you will be successful man if you are least motivated then there is always a failure in learning the language a new language uh there is ability and motivational component ability is something that you have your own competence you have your own capability ability to learn a language uh, just take an example of a classroom where 50 students are sitting one gets Ninety-five uh, percent marks, uh, tops the class, first position, or four by four CGPA. The others they get three point five, three two point five. So there is a variation. This is like few of the learners they have less ability to learn a language, and few of them they have higher ability to learn a language. But uh, when we talk about language, second language acquisition. here uh, to some extent we can say that the ability of the learners is almost parallel is almost equal as i gave you the example of the people who move from pakistan to saudi arabia most of them they are from labor class and they even do not have their matriculation certificate i mean they have hardly gone to school so but when they go there all of them almost all of them they learn language few of them they learn at an earlier stage few of them they spend months and few of them they spend fewer months to learn but 
not years they take to learn within months and within weeks they can learn so it matters uh, ability matters yes it matters in life that if you are more competent you can learn a language uh, more easily and uh, uh, without wasting time without wasting more time but if you are not very much intelligent definitely you will take uh, more days to learn it and then uh, that is the ability and the motivational factor or the motivational level if one person who is very capable to learn a language but he is not motivated to learn it then the ability is useless but one person who is not mentally that much intelligent or capable but he is motivated to learn it definitely he will learn it like uh, uh, in second year class in our colleges in pakistan we have in punjab specifically we have our uh, one chapter in english uh, that is uh, why boys fail in college uh, if you don't uh, if somebody doesn't remember it then you must consult a book of second year a class first year and second year college class fsc icom fa second year uh, why boys uh, fail in the college where is the uh, in that chapter a class is mentioned a, a typical class of the students is mentioned those who are very much competent at their school level but as they enter into college the writer says that they lose interest and they are overconfident of their abilities that we can learn a language without uh, we can pass the exams without any efforts but at the end they are failure so the same uh, criteria you can apply here in learning a language that you are much more intelligent you have the ability but you are not motivated to do it then you will not learn a language but many of the students from the school those who have got less marks or hardly manage to pass the school when they enter in college they start working hard although they are not competent they are not very intelligent but they are highly motivated to pass the exams and resultantly they pass the exams to just relate passing the exams with learning a new language that if you are motivated you can learn a language Uh, without wasting time and the motivation level is definitely it is social and psychological perspective as we discussed earlier that if the social uh, environment is favoring you and you uh, you are psychologically motivated to learn a language then it will be more easier for the learner and then uh, language is our identity a variety of attitudinal variables ability and linguistic factors that we have already discussed that there are linguistic factors there is ability of person uh, ethnic relations ethnic relation here means that how much relationship how good relations you, the 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 minority group of like minority linguistic group develops with the majority linguistic group then we move on uh, that um, how this socio psychological model works in this socio psychological model first of all we have attitude attitude simply means uh, thinking about something or behaving like uh, uh, when we say that he has bad attitude and good attitude bad and good attitude means that your behavior towards specific things whether it can be good it can be bad and orientations means the interest to something like if you you are uh, you have something thinking behaving towards something good and your interest is more about learning a second language then it leads to motivation attitude and or- orientation if they are both these factors they are positive in learner's personality it leads to motivation so uh, motivation is not only limited to attitude and orientation but aptitude also aptitude means your natural ability natural ability means your competence your intelligence like how much time you spend to learn learn a new language so aptitude uh, it's a natural ability and it leads towards uh, proficiency uh, then we have motivation and proficiency they lead towards self identity sorry i mentioned here that motivation is linked to attitude and orientations 
and aptitude is linked to proficiency proficiency mean the efficiency to do, to learn a language that how much proficient you are how much intelligent you are how much motivated you are motivation means having the interest of something motivation and proficiency both leads towards self identity self identity means uh, here it means the language your own language that a punjabi speaker he starts learning speaking urdu language there will be influence of urdu language on punjabi like we uh, living in pakistan uh, our self identity is urdu language uh, talk about let's talk about our national language but the dominant language is english language so whenever we speak urdu there are always uh, the factor of code switching and code mixing code switching and code mixing everyone knows that while speaking sentences of urdu sometimes we switch from urdu and uh, to english language speak one or two sentences of english and then come back again to urdu and sometimes we use specific words of english language while speaking urdu because the the language which is dominant it is always having an impact on your own language so what happens at the end that the dominant language it actually uh, occupies it dominates the minority group language or the uh, the language which is not dominated like urdu you can say that it is dominated by the english language in pakistan in india also in bangladesh in all the colonies where britain they ruled so english is uh, having uh, dominance no self uh, identity definitely it means recognition uh, self identity means to identify yourself to have your own identity recognition of yourself uh, it moves to uh, additive bilingualism and subtractive bilingualism so in you can say attitude and orientations like thinking towards something and interest towards uh, thinking about the target language or second language interest about the second language it leads towards your motivation if your attitude and orientation is good it will be you will be having a positive motivation high level of motivation and aptitude your natural ability competence it leads to your proficiency that how much time or how early you can learn a language that sometimes a student who takes 6 hours to read a book a student who takes 6 days to read a book and a student is there who reads 6 weeks to read a book so in the same way one who is more having more aptitude having more natural ability they can learn language in like one month some in two months and some in three months so it varies according to your natural ability and motivation and proficiency both they lead to uh, self identity and self identity actually it leads to additive bilingualism and sub uh, subtractive bilingualism additive bilingualism means that learners they learn a language without harming their own language as i told you like uh, when we start learning english language it has so much dominance on urdu that uh, we we try to speak few words of english language just to just to show that you can say to show off to the uh, to the listeners that we have much more knowledge of the dominant language uh, you can find out all around that those who do not know how to speak english language they try to speak it by adding few words and most of the times they add uh, very uh, i mean awkward words and they try to make uh, new words from with the mixture of urdu and english as i give example to my students always that uh, they say that uh, i felt gadbadation so from gadbad a urdu word they have made an amalgam of gadbadation so this is uh, a harm to the language this is subtractive bilingualism that your own language is been targeted by the second language but additive bilingualism means that no harm is done to your own native language and you learn a second language so the best example is when the pakistanis they move to arabic countries they start learning arabic but whenever they are speaking punjabi urdu sindhi in pakistan they do not use even a single word of arabic language 
so that is additive bilingualism and then it is subjective bilingualism means that it is uh, related to uh, some harm or ethnic like your ethnicity or your own language your own natural language is always at a risk by the dominance of other language so in socio psychological model we can say attitude and orientations lead towards motivation aptitude towards proficiency and no motivation and proficiency both lead towards self identity and self identity can be can have additive bilingualism or subjective bilingualism